back with Michael Riedel, and I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. This is the first edition of a show that is going to be the most popular thing, I think, ever on the internet. In fact, we are going viral as I speak. And I'm delighted to be joined for our first edition by the very talented and the very lo lovely Roxy Diaz. Thank you for having Welcome. me. Welcome. If we're not going viral now, we will be soon, Roxy, <laughs> with those shoes on. <laughs> yeah, these are uh, little conversation pieces. Sometimes they start up. I kind of like this. Absolutely. Now, Roxy has been hosting uh, BET's 106 in Park for yes. how many years now? It's been seven amazing years Seven now. amazing years. But you began in radio, if I'm not mistaken, I right? did. I was a radio personality when I first started, and uh, I interned for a local uh, television radio station in New Orleans, Louisiana. That's kind of how I got my feel, uh, docking tapes and labeling them and going into the library and going in. And oh, really? So are you a techie, too? Not you, at can all. Can you handle uh, all the stuff? <laughs> if, if, you know, if there's an emergency broadcasting thing comes along, you know what to Actually, do? Actually, I do know what to do when the emergency broadcasting thing comes on. The little beep, beep, beep. We had to run the test every, every month. Right, so yeah. it, was a, it was a great learning experience and a great foundation. I started um, on air in Dallas and worked my way from Dallas to Boston, Boston to Chicago. That's right, where you were what, the uh, the midday? I was the midday mommy. The midday mommy. How did you earn that nickname, the midday mommy? Well, I, my position was middays, and mm -hmm. I'm Latin, and you know, we but have the whole. you're not exactly a mommy yet, are you? Oh, no, no, well, I am a Latin mommy, so we, you know, it's like, <laughs> we call you poppy, and it has nothing to do with you being Latin. You can call me it's, poppy anytime, mommy. Yeah, everything. <laughs> so it was, it was just fun, so I just played off the midday mommy, and now there's many midday mommies across the country from what I know. Now you don't exactly have a face for radio so when did somebody think you know this is a face that should be on television? You know what's really funny is a great friend of mine uh, his name is Ludacris he's a famous rapper turned actor now he would always tell me Roxy you don't have a face for radio and when the opportunity came BET was doing a national search as they're doing right now for the new host of 106 he told me you should go do it. And if it wasn't for his inspiration, I probably never would have gotten that line really? and thought that I could do it. And he doesn't even know that to this day. I've never been like, you know what, thank you. <laughs> you know, thank did you, you for giving me the courage. Now, did you have to change the look a little bit? Because you know when I you do radio, did. you can basically do it in your bathroom exactly. in your pajamas. Exactly. I was a sweat pants, sweat I had every Adidas tracksuit, Rockwear tracksuit, and Air Force Ones known to man. <laughs> I was a tomboy. It was so funny, and I remember that my audition for 106 and Park was probably the first pair of heels I actually went and got some of these crazy outrageous boots because I knew Free liked shoes, and so I got some outrageous boots. And But I was still such a tomboy, and BT totally turned me into a girly girl now. They hired you a stylist, and you had to grow your hair out and all that kind of thing? Yeah, color, grow, cut, know, are, everything. It was just But aren't there times, though, when you wake up and you have to go do something on a BT, you think, God, I wish I were still on the radio so I don't have to have my hair done Plenty up. of, well, it's, I love the hair and makeup aspect about it. Sometimes I could fight with wardrobe, like, I don't want to wear a dress. I don't want to wear this. I want to wear sweatpants and sneakers. And they're like, that's not going to happen. Like, it's not going to happen. You, you, you know, you embody uh, such a feminine, womanly uh, role model role on the show as well. So the way you carry yourself and the way you dress, I try to implement good, tasteful dressing on the show. Now, I don't always get it right. <laughs> We've had some bombs, but, you know, I try to keep it classy. Yeah. Classy. Yeah, yeah. Now, you are leaving, though, uh, 106 in part we, because uh, you're embarking <laughs> on a new career, which is, I think, kind of must be a little scary. You're going to be an actress. Well, I'm still con I'm still going out for other hosting opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. I think that in this day and age of Hollywood and entertainment, you kind of have to be a multi-hyphenate. You have to be able to. Would you like to be co-host of Name Check with Michael Riedel? Why not? <laughs> if the check is right, we can. <laughs> if the check is right, um, you have to be able Somebody's to. Somebody's well much. trained. Exactly. <laughs> Been in doing this for a long, a long time. time right? That's right. A long time. Um, you know, I love radio. I love television hosting, and acting is just the new chapter in my life. So is DJing mm -hmm. as well. I think like when you see people like a Nick Cannon and a Jamie Foxx, they just do so much that you have to be able to do all the other things as well. So acting is, yes, one of them. I've just been able to finish two films in the last year. I've been able to total four already. Wow. Did you ever want to be an actress? Is this something uh, that you aspired to as a, as a, as a kid? Were it, you in high school was, plays and whatnot? Um, it was something I was always interested in. I, yeah, I was in some school plays and stuff like that, but I, I guess it's like one of those dreams like you never think would really become reality, but then I just did uh, another movie uh, with Lynn Whitfield. 
Oh yes, and I know Lynn very well. She's and, terrific. And she's amazing. Yeah. And so it's like I'm doing movies with Lynn Whitfield, and it's like, oh my gosh, like this can really be. You should happening. see Lynn. Lynn once did a um, television series on Josephine Baker, the great Josephine Baker. Really phenomenal. She's performance. an amazing actress. Yeah, she's terrific. She's she hangs amazing. out here in New York at Shea Josephine, which is a restaurant that is run by Josephine Baker's adopted son, wow. Jean Claude Baker, and Lynn's okay. always there. Oh. It's full of Josephine Baker. Well, now I know where to stalk her at. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's going to be your fault. You're right about it later. <laughs> Roxy now, scene stalking Lynn Whitfield. Who are, you, who are you studying acting with? I studied with um, Susan Batson mm -hmm. here in New York City. And Very she's well amazing. known acting yes, teacher Nicole to many Kidman, famous people. Yeah. Everybody, Chris yeah. Rock, I mean, you name it, Rihanna, yeah. Janet. Yeah. And um, she's amazing. And she mm -hmm. comes from a theatrical background as well. So she really tries to get that drama out of you. And I tend to prefer. Uh, more drama driven roles mm. also. I like depth in a character. Mm -hmm. I like uh, that stuff that's going to make your throat and you just gag and cry and emotion. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. You want to do Tennessee Williams. You want to do Arthur Miller. <laughs> you want to do Eugene O'Neill. Um, Maybe not right now. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> but sooner or later. It's like a more like Halle Berry, emotional and monsters <laughs> ball, not the sex part, but you know, all the rest of the movie that people don't really talk about, but yeah, yeah. I like it. Now, over the years, you've interviewed some um, very, very well-known people, including uh, President Obama, yeah, I believe. Yeah, you, you know what's funny is that I actually met President Obama when he was Senator Obama, and this was when I was doing radio in Chicago. In Chicago yeah. yeah, and he was Senator Obama, and there's this big parade called the Bud Billiken Parade in Chicago, which is like a parade that amps the kids to get ready for school. Mm -hmm. And um, I, re ne I will never, ever, ever forget that uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson comes up to me, and he's like, a junior, I'm sorry, comes up to me, and he's like, Roxy, and this is when I first got the 106 and Park deal. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, everywhere, I'm in Chicago, they loving it. And, um, he comes up to me, he's like, I want to introduce you to our first African-American president. Mm -hmm. This is Senator Barack Obama. And at the time, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, they will ever have a, a black <laughs> president. I was really naive. But I met him, and I was like, it's so nice to meet you. So when I saw his name on the ballot in running, and he was nominated to, I was just in awe. I'm like, oh, my gosh, mm -hmm. this is the guy that he was talking about. And from that moment, I was just like, to, to go from, it's the epitome of chasing your dreams. You know, they always said it, when you met the Bill Clinton for the first time, you, you just knew he had this intense charisma and that this was a man who was going to go to the top. When you mm -hmm. met o Barack Obama the first time, did you feel that intensity of that political I charisma? I love, it was such a quick um, introduction and meeting, but definitely the way he was poised and he kind of commanded that, that presence in that scene and so it, it was a surreal moment, and it was really a fast moment too, but I think when I saw him more speaking uh, nationally and I would watch how the just the whole campaign was unfolding, I was just so proud. Mm -hmm. I was so proud of his story, and what a remarkable time that was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you ever interview Eddie Murphy? I did. We had, um, Terrence and I were actually fortunate to have Eddie Murphy on the show for the first time that BET ever had him on the network and he's been in the entertainment business for over 30 years now. So for having him on the show for the first time, it was pretty, pretty amazing. It was yeah. a lot of fun too. They did this whole skit of uh, the coming to America dancers and <laughs> like they came out and they had rose petals going down the stairs and I'll never forget his face when the curtain came up and he's kind of like, What's going on? It was like the most confusing <laughs> face he's ever had. It was hilarious. But Except he's, he goes with the flow. I mean, the guy comes from improv, so oh, I course. suppose he can pick up very quickly. Oh, of course. He's really cool. He's, now, he's a lot of fun. I'm going to be just a little cheeky here, because I think I saw a picture of you on a yacht with Eddie Murphy. Am a I, yacht? Am I mistaken about I've that? never been on a yacht with Eddie Murphy. Or you, didn't you fall in the surf or something like that? And he was um, I go to beaches all the time. <laughs> with Eddie? Uh, with Eddie, I, I've gone to beaches. I've never been on a beach with Eddie before yet, though. Right, right. But you guys are just friends. We're good friends. If I have a yacht, will you come on my yacht? I would so. Are you having a yacht party? Absolutely, darling. Of course, I would love it. Right there in the middle of the Hudson. It's All right, not the same view, but <laughs> have a great time. All right, darling, stick around. We'll have you back in a minute. But I want to go to my friend Stephanie Smith from Page Six with the latest hot gossip. Stephanie, take it away. Hey, Michael, thank you. So the biggest story of the day, of the week, of the summer has been Tom Cruise, Katie Holmes, Splitsville, Dunzo, it's over. Katie Holmes filed for divorce right before July 4th, and less than two weeks later, the divorce was settled. Katie will get primary custody of their daughter, Suri, and she will live primarily in New York. And some uh, lawyers have suspected that Katie will receive anywhere from 20 to $50 million uh, in a lump sum payout as uh, part of the settlement. Wow. 
Yeah, and she's going to be coming on name check and jumping up and down on the chair here saying, thank God I'm free, finally. <laughs> no, but everyone, I think, is looking to see what Katie Holmes' next move will be as a single mother living in the city. Will she go back to acting? Will she focus on her fashion line? So it'll be interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to watch. Um, another story that really caught our attention was this whole fake baby mama drama with Chris Humphreys and his sort of girlfriend, Myla Sinanaj. Now, Chris Humphreys is in the middle of a divorce from his estranged wife, Kim Kardashian. But this woman, Myla, has claimed that she had a romantic, serious relationship with Chris just months after his separation from Kim. Now, last week, pictures emerged, and she sort of played along with the rumor that Myla was pregnant. Now, Chris has denied this, and of course, his camp went into a tailspin thinking that this news would damage his uh, case against Kim in their divorce proceedings. But just two days later, more pictures emerged with Myla in a bikini and a flat stomach, and her saying, oops, sorry, not pregnant. So. <laughs> wow. Don't give her a lie detector test, give her a rabbit test. <laughs> exactly, wow. I mean, I feel like this Can you imagine if you're gonna lie about something? Why would you choose about lying about being pregnant? I mean, sooner or later, you're gonna find out it's not truth. true. Not I mean, yeah, you know, they're together, they're not together, she's pregnant, she's not pregnant, maybe, to, maybe next week they'll be engaged, who knows. <laughs> um, but there is actually some happy news on the Hollywood romance front. Uh, Modern Family star uh, Sofia Vergara and her boyfriend Nick Loeb got engaged Aww. a few days ago in Mexico. The couple were there celebrating Sofia's 40th birthday and Nick Loeb finally put a ring on it. Now the couple had been together since February 2010 and they briefly broke up in May, but they quickly got back together. Now it looks like they're going to head to the altar. Oh, how exciting. <clears throat> Maybe I'll exciting. be invited to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm interested in, though, is uh, uh, Tom and Katie Holmes, and particularly what Katie Holmes is going to do now that she's gotten out of the shadow of this rather ridiculous relationship. Um, I saw Katie Holmes do an Arthur Miller play, All My Sons on Broadway, mm -hmm. and I thought she was terrific. Do you guys think that this might be a way for her to really establish herself as an actress independent of Tom Cruise by doing some serious work? I think when you always when you're associated with such a phenomenal name as a Tom Cruise, no matter what, you're always going to be Tom Cruise's ex-wife. There's not going to be any shaking that. But um, she although is, Nicole Kidman has sort of emerged uh, from that, it took many extent. years. It took mm -hmm. many yeah. many years. And but Nicole Kidman had had a phenomenal name as well yeah, that's before. True. So, um, you know, Katie, we started getting to know Katie in her relationship with Tom Cruise and, and now with the divorce, I think it will be that breakout, uh, it will be that breakout opportunity for her and she is a great actress. I, mm -hmm. think she's, I think she's great. I think she's good in what I've seen her in. She's a lot of fun. So I look forward to seeing her in more. I think she's gonna continue acting. I don't think she's not gonna not focus on, on her aspect of it. And uh, even more now, she has so much more to prove than ever before. Yeah, what are you hearing, Stephanie, about what she might do? Well, I think a lot of people are talking about her fashion line. She launched a clothing line, Holmes & Yang, with her stylist, and she's looking to launch her first fashion show during Fashion Week. But I think a transition to acting would be fantastic for her. Most people still associate her with Dawson's Creek when she mm -hmm. was young, before she had children, before she got married. Now if she transitions back to acting, she'll be a full-fledged woman, a mother, probably taking more mature roles. When uh, Nicole Kidman was with Tom Cruise, she famously did a play on Broadway called The Blue Room, mm -hmm. in which she took her clothes off for seven and a half seconds. I know I had to clock it for the paper. <laughs> um, but she wound up on the cover of Newsweek magazine by doing a Broadway play. Mm -hmm. And she always said that that was the thing that began her kind of career away from Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. So as you pursue your acting career, Roxy, mm -hmm. keep in mind, Broadway is a place where you can show the world that you're a serious, talented, I totally agree. genuine I, actress. I totally, totally agree. That is definitely an inspiration and a dream to be able to do Broadway one day. Well. One day. <laughs> All right, Roxy Diaz, you are a charming, charming guest. Thank you for And thank you for being our first guest here on, uh, what's it called, Name Check? Name Check. With Michael Riedel. Check the name. There you go. <laughs> Co-hosting spot, if the check is right for her. <laughs> if the check is right. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much. And we will see you next time on Name Check.